Greetings. My name is Alex Weingarten with Hawk Ridge Systems, and today my fellow application engineer Patrick James and I will be showing an abridged version of our presentation, the right tool for the job, featuring weldments and sheet metal. So those are just two of the seemingly endless number of specialized tools in the SolidWorks utility belt. They're designed to save you time, consolidate functionality, and increase efficiency. Um, for the full presentation, there will be a link below, but this will be a nice, concise summary. So for the weldments, we'll be showing how to create custom structural member profiles, generating structural member groups, editing corner treatments, and then quickly converting to a drawing with a weldment cut list table and associated annotation balloons. So let's start at the end. This is the final bus stop assembly with my weldment structures and Patrick's sheet metal bench. If I take a cross section to check out these weldment profiles, I see a polygon, a large diameter pipe, and a rectangular tube for the bench uh, framing and supports. So let's start with how do you make a new weldment profile? So I'll open a new blank part file and start a new sketch on any plane. Um, the origin is going to be the insertion point. So typically that'll be the center of whatever profile shape you make. I'm going to do a quick nine-sided polygon. And once I have the sketch highlighted, I'll do a save as and choose the type to library part feature. So once I change this, it will default to whatever weldment profile location I have which will need a subfolder to make sure that is properly segmented. Once you save it, the icon changes to reflect the library part feature. So now I can close that out and open my 3D sketch or weldment frame. I'll activate the weldment tab in the command manager, hit structural member, and then locate my library part feature I just made. There it is. Now I will start selecting groups of sketch entities to insert my chosen weldment profile at that origin pierce point. I'll repeat this process a few more times, this time with the pipe structure. You can see I can click parallel groups as well as contiguous ones. And this next one will be the rectangular pipe frame around the bench, so that'll be contiguous. Next group will be parallel new group crossbar finally that mid last structural member i'm going to do a bit of an oddball this airport terminal profile since these are arcs i'm going to have to make each one individual even though they're parallel so i just have to keep creating new groups even if i jump out i can always edit jump back in and there you have it hide my sketch so that completes the main frame last thing I'll do is edit the corner. Start with this trim extend, select what bodies I want to trim, and the trimming boundary. You can see it subtracts whatever I want and keeps the other part of what I choose. And now I'll convert it quickly to a drawing. So once my drawing palette is loaded, I can click and drag the isometric view onto the drawing sheet, go over to the annotation tab, table, weldment cut list, insert with default settings, resize, and then finally add the auto balloons. And you can see I can adjust the placement, which will associate those cut list table numbers in the isometric view. And now over to Patrick James with Sheet Metal, he'll be going through some really helpful introductory tools. The first feature I'll start with is the base flange tab. This is often going to be the first feature when you don't have any material yet for a sheet metal part. What I'm doing here is sketching out a rectangle and this is going to be the seat for a park bench which is the product that we'll be doing for this example. So with this first sketch we're going to go into the property manager here which looks a lot like the boss extrude feature. I can put a specific number down for the thickness but instead I'm going to use the sheet metal gauge table predefined table here that has gauges with corresponding thicknesses and bend radii. So depending on the material that we're using, 
This is, uh, these numbers may vary and you can actually make your own if you like. I'll be sticking with the default one for this example. Some other things of note within the gauge table is going to be the bend radius. And so this is actually going to propagate to other features as I add them to this base plate. So within our sheet metal tab, I'll do an edge flange here. So it's as simple as just grabbing an edge, dragging it up, and I can even set a specific distance. The actual bend radius is also remembered here. So that's going to be the default for all subsequent uh, sheet metal features that I add on here. I'll do one more edge flange down at the bottom. Give that one a dimension, we'll call it two inches. And then I do want to show down at the bottom here the end conditions of that bend. So it's starting out as the bend outside. We can also have these bends be on the inside. So just depending on what your dimensions are, uh, you can kind of pick the, the right one for that. Now, next step is going to be to, what if I want to add a cut to this? Uh, we can do this in the flattened state or in the folded state, but if I want to put a cut directly over a bend, I'm going to use the unfold method. So I'll grab my base flange, collect my bends, flatten my part, and now in this flattened state, I can actually put a uh, cut directly through either a flat or a bent piece. So I'll do that with uh, an extruded cut, just do a quick little rectangular cut here. Not even going to bother with a dimension for this example. Through all, and then the normal cut option that'll actually keep my uh, thickness constant through the cut. So fold this one back up, collect all my bends, and we'll see what this looks like once it's all folded. And there we go. So the cut is maintained. We're able to bend up and still see that constant thickness. All right, next I'll hit this one with a quick save. And then once this one's saved, I, I do want to flatten this part. Uh, so we can actually have a flattened button in here. There's a feature at the bottom of our feature tree that has all the bends inside of it. So it's essentially having the bends be in a state where our part looks flat with respect to our base flange. So tossing this into a drawing, we'll actually get that flat pattern on our view palette. We can drag it directly over. And then we can actually go directly up to rotate our model. So this one was off a little bit from what I was expecting, so I'll hit it with a 90 degree rotation. Now that one looks a little bit better. So I might be able to send this to uh, you know, one of my manufacturing folks who can actually bend this uh, sheet metal thing in the, the real world. Now this content was just a small piece from our presentation at the Hawk Ridge Design and Manufacturing Conference named The Right Tool for the Job, SolidWorks Weld Mints and Sheet Metal. Here we go through a case study making a bus stop and a bench while going through some of the basics of the weld mints and sheet metal tools. So if you missed it and would like to check it out, look for a link in the video description below. Leave a comment for what SolidWorks videos you'd like to see next. Like and subscribe for more Hawkridge video content.